what we are trying to do is intervene. This is a focused intervention at that early opportunity. Thanks for joining us tonight. What County Attorney Mary Moriarty was talking about there is getting ahead of our kids getting involved in crime. Why? Because kids as young as 10 have been committing crimes, and it's beyond stating the obvious to say that's a problem. And whether it's her or the chief of police or members of the community, early intervention seems to be the refrain when they start talking about solutions like they did today. So this morning, the Hennepin County Attorney Office a new office announced a new plan. They're going to work with local law enforcement to identify what they call high risk young people. A social worker will contact the family about their child's concerning behavior and connect those families with resources that they're making available to them. And this plan will also speed up the time between charges being issued for a young person and a court date being set for those kids arrested and put in juvenile detention. Our children are screaming out for help. Our children are screaming. And at what point do we say enough is enough? There was also a gathering at the same time today. Parents and community activists saying the same thing the county attorney was saying. And those parents and community were saying, don't leave us out of the conversation. And they want the county attorney's plan to include some cultural competency as well. There's yet another person who was talking today, welcoming people being upset, people calling for an all-hands-on-deck approach to our young kids being involved in stealing cars and taking them on sometimes deadly joy rides. And that person was Minneapolis Police Chief Brian O'Hara. When a county attorney and community and a police chief are all talking on the same day about the same thing sounding the alarm, it's impossible to conclude there isn't an alarming problem. I'm thankful because I've been screaming about this problem. This is really urgent and everyone in the community needs to be engaged to help us try and figure this thing out. Last year, Minneapolis saw a 836% increase in stolen Kia and Hyundai automobiles. It's so bad in our state, the attorney general launched an investigation into those automakers for selling cars with such vulnerable anti-theft protections. But while litigation looms, the problem's only getting worse because the people stealing the cars most often are kids. Last week, there was an 11-year-old uh, arrested with an illegal handgun with a switch, so modified to fire automatically, you know, while riding around in one of these cars. I and mean, it's, it's incredibly, incredibly dangerous. How dangerous? Case in point, the stolen Kia by preteens and teens nine days ago that resulted in a chase and crash into a car and bus stop was stolen by kids who have a history, a history that includes them being victims of crime too. Those juveniles were all known to law enforcement. Several of them had been victims of gun violence themselves already. We believe were involved in a, a pattern of armed robberies right before that pursuit happened. That case is one of several that leaves Chief O'Hara in that chorus with community that is outraged. I need everyone to be outraged at what is happening to these kids, regardless of the police chasing them. I need everyone to be outraged that since I've been the chief, we've had a 12-year-old that's been shot twice in stolen cars, that we had, a, I think, a 14-year-old that died crashing a stolen car on Lindale Avenue. We've had a 15-year-old girl that crashed in a stolen car about a month ago, and she's still in a coma today. He's joining in that chorus of outrage that it's happening. But when it comes to pursuing kids who have stolen these cars in high-speed chases, he and his Minneapolis Police Department are facing singular criticism, saying, why chase a kid? We do not know at the time the age of people that we're chasing. Is there anything in the policy that says don't chase a 12-year-old? Well, I mean, the police might not necessarily know. And in fact, if we did know for sure who was in the car, then that would be a reason not to pursue and to try and, you know, go to the court, do a court process, you know, uh, seek charges that way. And when it comes to even talking about charges or courts, the ages of these kids matters. And O'Hara thinks that these ages, 11, 12, 13 years old, that has a lot to do with this continuing. Because kids that young, O'Hara thinks, either don't know or don't care about the consequences, because the consequences so far have been minimal. I think a lot of these kids, particularly since they're, they're younger than what we've seen in the past, don't have the same sense of consequence for their action that they should. And I think a lot of them just think that they're living in a video game. And I think we need to figure out how we're gonna take the fun out of this. 
It's important to know that question, how to take the fun out of it, how to fix it, isn't just a question in the city of Minneapolis. It's a question in St. Paul. They have the same issue. Stole a Kia and Hyundai's up 611%. In New York City, a 500% increase. In Atlanta, a 755% increase, a 767% increase in Chicago, and a 2400% increase in Rochester, New York. 17 states suing these automakers. And in the vast majority of these stolen cars in all of those cities, it's young teenagers.